Hello watchers and dear subscribers, welcome to Android app development tutorial number 17. This is the part 5 tutorial of the button series and in this tutorial I am going to talk about the method 3 of event handling in case of buttons. Now let's proceed. Now before we proceed I would like you to introduce with a basic example of event handling. Now let us consider a rich spoiled brat or you can say a eve teaser who dare to tease a girl walking down the street. Now this lady shouts but no people around her hear her shout and do dare to fight with this eve teaser except one who is her boyfriend. Her boyfriend respond to her shout and actually perform an action such as a tight punch on that boy's face. Now similar thing happens in the case of android widgets. Now let us consider a user using a smartphone or using an application that you made. Now suppose user hits on a button. Now in response to the click that user has done, it creates an event. Now this event is actually listened by only one listener which is concerned of this button click. So the, it is the event listener that responds to an event and this event listener ignites of functionality or you can say it performs an action such as downloading, calling, messaging or submit a registration form blah 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 whatever you can say. Now these two parallel processes you can interrelate with each other. This is an event, this is an event listener and the action is performed here. Now whole this process is actually known as event handling in Android. So this was the basic stuff how the things goes on. Now let's proceed forward. There are actually three ways to handle the button click. We saw the two of them. Now it's time to see the third one that is the handling button through our XML layout. If you are watching this tutorial for the first time then please go back and watch my tutorials that explains the first two methods to handle the button click using the on click listener. In this tutorial I will talk about the handling button through our XML layout directly. Right? Now this is our XML layout in which I am having two buttons. I have named it as first button and the second button. The codes are as follows. I have given it id at the rate slash id b first. Right? You can change it. You can give it as per your wish. Now the wrap content and wrap content. Right? Now after that text first button which, which you can see here. Now guys it is not recommended to write the text directly here. You can simply go to the string.xml, specify a specific string and here you can provide the address like at the rate string slash first underscore button. For the sake of simplicity I have written the text equal to first button directly because I don't want you to get confused right. Now the quotes of second button I have given the id b second right. Now text equal to second button right. Now there is some changes in our quotes of button in our XML layout. What's that? Now the changes is we have to add an another attribute Android on click equal to performed action right. This perform action is actually what a function defined in our main activity right. Similarly in this button also we can write on click equal to perform action. Now this is a method name perform action that is actually user defined. You can write as per your wish do something perform something right as per your wish no props. Now this perform action is a method that is present where inside our main activity right. So in our main activity or any Java class implementing the action bar activity you can add that function inside it like this right public void perform action the parameter it takes like view v as we saw in the previous few tutorials we implemented on click listener and we have a function on click inside the on click method we had the same parameter view space v this is the object name and this is the class view right now inside this method we have to write the codes for the action to be performed right now let's proceed to our main activity codes now our codes of the main activity is as follows this is the basic structure which extends the action bar activity right now inside our main activity now in this method we don't have to initialize our buttons in this class because our xml layout is sufficient to ignite the event listener right in this case guys our event listener is what perform action view v now this is our user defined method guys and the name of the function is exactly same what we defined in our XML layout in the attributes of our button. So it is also case sensitive so never change the name of the method that you defined in the XML layout and that you defined in the main activity right. 
Now inside the perform action function you can write the codes to do something or perform some action such as messaging, downloading, whatever you want to do, right? So if you're not getting the codes right here guys, don't worry about it. In the next tutorial, I will discuss about the codes and also discuss about the how to differentiate between the two buttons. That is the first button and the second button. So stay tuned. This is Shrek from SmartHerd signing off and please share my video and subscribe to my channel and do leave a comment below my video. Thank you.